this tutorial, I'll show you how to recreate the stylized look of the Sin City movies using BCC and After Effects. Hi, here I am in After Effects, and you can see the finished result here, the hyper-stylized black and white look of the Sin City movies. So what we've done is we've made the ladies mostly black and white, but kept certain colors alive on them. Also, I've cartooned the background with a glow and added some digital rain to the whole thing. All right, so it's actually not that hard to do. You just got to know how to go about it. So let's get started. So here I've got a mostly blank timeline. I'm going to bring in my green screenshot first. So footage courtesy of Artbeats. Lots of good green screen and aerial shots there to choose from. Very useful for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is get rid of the green. I'm going to use BCC Chroma Key Studio, which is a new effect in BCC 9, by the way. So I'm just going to twirl down chroma key, use the eyedropper there to select green, and we get a really good key right off the bat. Uh, let's just change the view options to view matte noise. So we can see a little bit of noise around our edges and around the hair. So if I increase the lightness just a bit, we can get rid of a lot of that noise. So go back to final composite, and we still kept a lot of the hair intact, but now we have a more solid key. All right, now this is going to be a very stylized look, so I'm actually not going to do much more to the key than that. Um, again, just because it's going to be black and white, and it's going to be so stark, you wouldn't even notice anyway. Okay, so moving on from the keying effect, now let's pull most of the color out of this actress. There's a number of different ways you could do this effect. Uh, the most direct is to use correct selected color, just applying that on. I zoom in on the part of the body that I want to keep, and in this case, that's the lips. So if I start making changes here, like brightness and contrast, okay, well, the lips are definitely affected, but so are her cheeks, her neck, etc. So how do we see what we're doing here? Well, change your view mode to matte. So now you can see what is actually being selected when I selected the lip color there. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can change this selection process. Of course, you have a color range slider here, um, but that might not do it if the hue or chroma or whatever value is too similar. So what I suggest is to try different color matching methods. For example, RGB gives you a totally different result, as does chroma and hue. Now, hue has almost done a perfect job isolating the lips, of course, we still have a lot of stuff around her eyes and her hair. So if we bring down the blend and bring down the color range, okay, almost just on the lips there. One further thing you can do is use legacy HSL matching. In this case, it gives a very good result. And on top of that, you have all these other color space options down here. So a lot of different ways to fine tune your keying method. and Whatever works best for you will depend on your footage. Okay, so that's enough of the matte mode. Let's go to output. And I'm pretty confident that we have the lips isolated. So I'm going to reverse the color range by this checkbox and then go right to saturation, set it to negative 100. And there we can see the lips staying red. Uh, wow, we did such a narrow job on this that even her tongue is gray, but her lips are red. That is pretty darn impressive. All right, in fact, you might even want to keep the tongue red too. Go to a shot where we can see it, maybe increase the range just enough. And there, we got it. Oh, and soften it up a bit. That's yeah, a balancing act, no question about that. There we go. Okay, so we have her lips isolated. Uh, the rest of her looks kind of bland. So we've got these other color correction tools, brightness and contrast. We can fine tune, make it a little bit more striking. And this is also where your color space options make a big difference. So you can see each one of these gives you a unique result. Um, the one that I like varies from time to time. Uh, HSP looks good on this clip. Uh, keeps her lips nice and deep red, but the rest of her is also very stunning. And I think I am going to soften that key one more time, just so, there we go. 
Much better. All right, so if that was bothering you at home, then I just fixed it. Although it's all for naught because I don't want to keep the red color on her. I want to keep the blue dress, um, but we'll choose a different color shortly. So the reason I did all that with her first is because once I bring in the second clip, well, we're going to use the same process on her. I'm just going to copy these filters and paste them right on. Hey, look at that. And in her case, we do want to keep the red dress. We also want a tighter key. So let's go back into chroma key, just increase the lightness. Perfect. If your edges look a little bit aliased for you, you can always go into uh, Matt Choker and smooth them out. You don't have to choke too much, just enough. Maybe blend them back in a bit with gray soften. There, good. All right, so we have our second shot. Just going to flip her around. So negative 100 on that scale. And let's line her up so we can see both of them. Looks good, maybe a little bit lower, like so. All right, now this is cool looking, like red is the only color we have here. Um, or we can be even more shocking and keep blue in this woman instead of red. So a fast way to do that, change the view mode from output to source, use the eyedropper again and just select blue instead of red, and change the view back to output. Now because we did such a good job setting up our red key, look how good the blue key looks. We don't have to change anything. So you really get a lot of mileage out of a carefully selected mat there. And you know, you could do that with most colors. Of course, the blue and red in this shot are very striking, which is why I chose it, but uh, you would have chosen the same shot too, I'm sure. Okay, so we have our lovely ladies doing their black and white thing. Now let's put the city in back of them. So here's that city shot. Again, this also came from Artbeats. Uh, a lot of great aerial shots there. All right, now to make the city look black and white, I'm actually going to use a sketch filter. I'm going to use charcoal sketch. Now, a charcoal sketch has thick lines by default, which is what I want for this. And to get it to be white on black, I'm just going to reverse the colors, which is a control in the advanced group here. And that's it. That's all I have to do for the city shot. You can, of course, make changes of your own. Change the line style, heavy, medium, light. Change the width, the threshold. All these things are customizable, but the default settings are pretty darn good. So there's that. All right, now all together, it's starting to take shape. Um, actually, now that we have such a stark backdrop, I might even want to increase the contrast on our foreground lady just a bit there so she blends in a bit better. Um, oh, I also could be using a light wrap, like a responsible person. Uh, light wrap, of course, will blend your background on the edges of your foreground. So just a little bit to help it blend a little bit more. And again, when it's this stylized, like I almost wonder how much people would even notice if it was or wasn't there. But, you know, cover your bases. It's a good idea to put it in. All right, now we've got to add some rain and some glow and a vignette, and then we'll be done. So the first thing we're going to do is the rain. And we have a filter dedicated to generating rain, and it's called BCC Rain. And I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use Particle Emitter because I just love Particle Emitter so much. We have a preset, though, called Pouring Rain, which looks great for this kind of thing. And a few things I want to customize for this specific shot. For example, I'm going to turn down the birth rate to 200. I'm going to increase the size of the particles. I'm going to give the particles an image facing setting of weighted downward. And I'm going to rotate the whole system um, about 40 or 30 degrees like so. Okay, so now the rain is really like coming at them. And you could make even further changes to the particle, by the way. You can change the scale X and Y independently to get really thick looking rain, really long looking rain. I just wanted to thicken it up a little bit there. 
Next, I'm going to go into the render group, and I'm going to use motion blur at normal settings, and depth of field, which is in the camera group down here. Just use depth of field, and that also adds a nice bit of depth. And that's what I was going to do. In the emitter group, if you want your rain to be even more uh, perspective-y, that's a word I just made up, you can increase the scale Z or decrease it. So this will add more or less depth to your rain. I think more looks better for this. And there we go. And actually, one thing I'm going to do new this time, I'm going to change the blend mode on this whole rain layer. Maybe just screen just to further blunt it in a little bit better. OK, now we're going to add an adjustment layer. And to this, we're going to first add our glow to in the film style group. I'm going to use Fast Film Glow, which uses a GPU acceleration if you have it. So that's very useful. I'm going to increase the threshold just a bit, turn down the radius, keep the glow kind of sharp here, and maybe turn down the intensity just a bit. Or maybe not. This is a very stylized look after all. And then lastly, we're going to add a vignette also in the film category on top of everything. I'm just going to move the center of the vignette off a bit, maybe shrink down the radius, and square it up, the squareness parameter, like so, and rotate it. So it looks more film noir y, another word I think I made up. But okay, there you go. So the Sin City look in just a few minutes using all BCC filters in After Effects. So hopefully you liked what you saw here. Oh, look, even her lips are still red. That's awesome. Anyway, uh, and if you want to see more tutorials, just check out our website at borseffects.com.